Good morning, my loveds. So it's Tuesday, and the weather could be weird. I mean, I know where I live. The weather's always weird, but um, it it was in the 40s, and apparently the wind is going to get really bad, and then the rain is going to get really bad, and it's all during the day, like between 10 and 4. So I don't know what today's going to be like. There was no natural... <laughs> I mean, no, not even a peak of the sun. The, the clouds are really, really thick. So if you are in the area of this storm, and it pretty much covers the entire state of Texas and probably most of Oklahoma too, um, be careful today, you know. And interestingly enough, our title is Protection. So <laughs> we'll see. Okay, it is January 24th. Our title is Protection. Our first qu quote is, My help cometh from the Lord, and that is Psalm 121.2. Uh, and then the second question is, the presence of love warms us, the peace of God covers us. And that is from Science of Mind, page 560. All right. The I feel certain that no matter how courageous we may have proved ourselves to be, there comes those moments when we feel in need of protection or deliverance from an experience that is beyond our ability to handle. We have all read and heard the stories of great heroes, such as Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, who have readily admitted the feelings of fear and insecurity that have led them to call upon a higher power. In the case of this great World War I ace, it happened on more than one occasion. The important point is that such brave people do not panic in these moments. The act of calling upon, looking for, and accepting some invisible source of health, help and protection stems from an absolute and unshakable attitude of inner peace. During challenging times, let us allow the peace to hold us gently. Let us feel the strength and protection that will free us from the bonds of fear and anxiety and deliver us from danger. In the peace that holds me gently and protects me, I feel the love of the divine presence and my anxious moment is past. I permit this peace to flow through my being, through my mind and heart, through my body and affairs. Every danger, every challenge, every problem is released and the true way is made clear before me. I am peace. I am love. I am power. I am safe and secure in the action of God. And that is W.M., which is William Miller. All right. Well, first off, I'd never heard of Eddie Rickenbacker before. And now maybe I'm going to go and look up Eddie Rickenbacker. So I'm glad that he did tell us that it was a World War I ace. Um, I mean, we are... 30 years removed from this book, because I think it was published in 1991. Uh, so there, <laughs> you know, uh, which ironically is the year I graduated from high school. Okay. Um, well, yeah. But the definition of courage can be being afraid and doing it anyway. Uh and frequently, that is exactly what a whole lot of us do. It's like, hey, we've got to do this. It's scary. And yet, what do we do? We take a deep breath and know it's going to be okay as we walk through the situation. Uh, and so that's the really interesting part there. Uh, and there is science behind the deep breath. Uh, when we take that deep breath, especially if we take several in a row, uh, it does actually relax our nervous system. So there is science there. Um, but there is something to the belief, and I'm not even necessarily going to say of a higher power. What I'm going to say is the belief in something bigger than we are, something bigger than we are. Uh, if all life is connected uh, and all life is good, uh, then, um, or if all life is connected and all, and God is good, then, you know, there's that belief in the end, it's going to be okay. And if it's not okay, then it's not the end. Um, and that has gotten me through a whole lot of just messiness, you know, because scary things happen, you know, and, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, I'm 
with our World War One ace, you know, he was literally taking his life in his hands. And most of the time what we do when we do scary things is we start a new job or we go someplace new or we go and meet new people. And it's scary. And I get it. I'm an introvert. I get it. Um, and yet we take that deep breath and we go do it anyway because we know it's going to be OK. Uh, it might even be fun. And yet here we are. Um, and we do it because we know that there's something bigger than us. There's so, that life holds us that, uh, that, that in a way God holds us. And the interesting thing about God holding us is that it's, it's all that, um, around us, uh, where we, we interact with God every day when we interact with each other and we have these amazing interactions and sometimes we have messy interactions and sometimes they're not so fun. Sometimes they're a little scary. Um, and, but life's got us and that right there, the willingness to believe in something bigger than us, uh, it, and, and that's, if you read all of the stories as, as William Miller alluded to, when you, when you read all of the stories of the great heroes, there comes a time in their life where, you know, they, they, they said, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to turn some of this over to something bigger than me. They still have to take their actions and do their stuff, but they're turning, they're at least turning over that feeling to something bigger, you know, it's like they're not sitting on their couch waiting for God to come and get them out of a scary situation. They are taking the actions that they need to get out of the scary situation, knowing that they are being held and guided by something bigger than they are. And that, that is what, where, that's where we fall on the, that's where we fall on this, on the spectrum. It's like, you know what? We, we treat and move our feet. So it's like, Yes, there is the scary thing that I have to do. Um, and I know that one, I'm not doing it by myself as they refer to the inner peace that I've got backup that I will be guided through it, especially if I am conscious. And then we go back to, and I, I've kind of gotten away from it, but one of the, one of the, the drum beats of science of mind is consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. If you are consciously paying attention and that being the big thing, paying attention to what's going on around you, then you'll see the signs. You'll be guided. You'll take the right action. You'll do what you need to do. You'll get through the situation. But it all comes back to you. One, being willing to being conscious. Um, and in with that, you can get through anything. Honestly, honestly, by being conscious and willing you can, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do. Because if you come up against something that you can't do, then someone will be presented to you that can, that will help you get through. But you got to be awake, aware, and willing. One, aware, uh, conscious, so that you see the person. And two, willing to do something terribly scary, which is to ask for help. Uh, there's, I've recently found him on, uh, Instagram and I can't think of, I think it's the Moonkeep Tavern on Instagram. And, uh, he was doing a bit where a, a child asked the barkeep, you know, what, what's the, what's the most courageous thing that you've said? Or, you know, what's, uh, what's the most amazing. And the, 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 the key, the barkeep thought about it for a minute and said, help. The scariest thing that we can do is ask, is ask for help. And yet the most courageous thing we can do is ask for help. Uh, and when we are presented with a situation that we cannot handle by ourselves, there will be people around us that can help us with the situation. But one, we've got to be conscious enough to see them. And two, we've got to be willing to ask for help. Um, so I know that, I know that he was talking about protection and he was talking about asking, you know, the, the inner peace of God. And that's huge because if you have that inner peace of God, then you, one, will be willing to ask for help because you're, 
your ego won't get in the way. Because frequently, you know, ego has a job. Ego's job is to keep you alive, period. That's ego's job. But ego isn't always great at doing its job because sometimes ego will look at the situation and go and not see the help in front of it. Because ego's only job is you. And so ego won't see the other people. And so, you know, I'm not bad mouthing ego. Ego absolutely has a job, but ego should never be in the driver's seat because ego won't stop and ask for help. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and when, when you let the inner peace of God in the driver's seat, the inner peace of God is willing to pull off to the side of the road and ask for help, you know, because the inner peace of God knows that it'll be okay. Um, so protection, that's where we go, you know, <sighs> interesting. You never know where I'm going to go. And I never know where I'm going to go. I don't read these things. Like I've never read this, read this book before. So I, I read it with you. I look forward to tomorrow though. Tomorrow's going to be really interesting. All right. Um, mission today. Should we choose to accept it? Huh. I don't know. The important point is, is that such brave people do not panic in these moments. The act of calling upon, looking for, and accepting some invisible source of help and protection stems from an absolute and unshakable attitude of inner peace. During challenging times, let us allow that peace to hold us gently. Okay, now... He says the act of calling upon, looking for, and accepting some invisible source of help. Yes, super important. That is the inner peace of God. I will absolutely take that as the mission. But the other thing is, is that when you accept that invisible source of help, it might make a visible source of help available. Please keep that in mind. So I would say... The unshakable attitude of peace. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to allow that inner peace to hold us gently. If you think you haven't got it, you're wrong. We come inborn with the, with the Christ consciousness. We come pre-installed with it, which means you have that inner peace. What I encourage you to do, the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to search for it within ourselves. Don't go looking out there. The, it says inner peace, which is the point of meditation. So the mission today, should you choose to accept it, is to find your inner peace. If you don't find it, that's okay. Take the first steps. Um, connect with the source of your own being. Um, find that inner source, find that Christ consciousness within you. Um, do I have suggestions on how to do that? Well, that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, almost three years. All of this, that's what this is. Um, connecting with the source of your inner, uh, peace, connecting with the Christ consciousness within you. I always say the password is love. Okay. Now the next thing I'm about to suggest, which is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself. That is absolutely one of the ways that you can find the apps, the, um, inner peace by loving yourself, being kind with yourself, being compassionate with yourself. That gets you closer to your inner peace than probably anything else will because, Hey, like I said, password is love. Um, and what does that look like? I started out talking about that deep breath. There is science behind the deep breath and how it calms the nervous system. Okay, there's one. There's also taking a walk, taking a nap, setting the situation aside for a moment, whatever the length of a moment is for you in that case, um, setting that aside and um, moving through the experience. Um, so it is self-care. It is all of that, whatever self-care looks like. Sometimes it means turning the alarm off and letting yourself sleep in. Sometimes it looks like exercising. Um, sometimes it looks like going to bed early. 
know, all of that. That is how you find that inner peace. Sometimes it looks like eating a really good, healthy meal. Sometimes it just looks like eating a really good meal. Sometimes it looks like calling a friend um, or a practitioner or a minister or, you know, you, you've got so many options with sacred literature and sacred music because you can read it yourself, have it read to you. There are all kinds of meditations all over YouTube. Um, there's all kinds of sound healing, which is really amazing. Um, and um, all of that. And so all of that is available for you to practice love, kindness, and compassion on yourself. Now, I encourage you to practice on yourself for a multitude of reasons. The first of which being you deserve your own love, you deserve your own kindness, you deserve your own compassion. The next bit is, is I'm encouraging you to create a habit, a well-worn path. The more often you practice on yourself, you are your own best test subject. You get immediate feedback there. Um, but you're also creating a bank so that when you meet people that need a little extra, you have extra to share. You are creating the habit where your first response will be loving, kind, and compassionate no matter what happens. Okay? Um, and you can have a loving, kind, and compassionate re reaction and still be firm. You can still have boundaries and you can still look at a situation and go, "Yep, yeah, this is not for me. And you can go over here. Okay. Loving, kind and compassion. It does not mean that you put yourself in harm's way because you are being loving, kind and compassionate with yourself. Okay. It does absolutely mean firm boundaries. All right. Um, so practice on yourself. That is one absolute definite way that you can find that inner peace, which I promise you, you do have. You come pre-installed with it. We all did. But it does take work to find it and to maintain it. And it takes making a well-worn path and the willingness to ask for help. So... Occasionally, I will remind people that crying is not a weakness. It is a strength, especially when you are willing to cry in front of others. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, where am I moving on to? Oh, I encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body. We got out and got that walk in before the rain came in by about 15 minutes. So it was really good. Um, I encourage you to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Your brain works better when it's hydrated. Um, can it come in the form of other things? Yes, but the base of every fluid is still liquid, is still water. So it includes coffee and tea and hot chocolate and all of that. Uh, just, you know, if you're like me, <laughs> watch your caffeine intake. This does not do caffeine. Um, all right. I encourage you to... Uh... So... Engage your mind and your body. Oh, bright light. <laughs> because there was none today. Because it's dark out there. Because we are going to have storms all day. And rain is good. And I enjoy a good storm. Do I enjoy it while at work? Not so much. I'd rather be at home where I can watch the weather. But, you know, it is what it is, right? So, um, please do get early in your day bright light. It can go a long way to uh, helping to reset those circadian rhythms, which is a natural hormone balance. And you, it can help you sleep better at night and have more energy during the day. It is science. You can look it up. Okay. And then, in the words of Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you. You do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. All right? Um, because it's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. Just as that inner peace is. The inner peace is something we come pre-installed with. Well, the ability to create heaven, I call it a superpower, but absolutely every one of us come pre-installed with that too. It's about learning our mind, learning our consciousness. And the really cool thing is, is the first time you do it is really amazing. And then each time after that, it gets a little easier, a little easier. And then heaven ceases to be a place and can become any place. And more importantly, it can become every place. Think about it. All right. Practice, practice, practice. That's why we're called practitioners. All right, beloveds. Um, and you can always take the words of Emma, you know, look for the good and praise it. You want to open the windows of your soul and find that inner peace. Look for the good and praise it. You can't go wrong there. Okay. Uh, I 
think I'm at the social media part where I remind you we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. Uh, I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I'm on. So please feel free to like and subscribe and share and do all of that. Uh, all of that. Um, because, yeah, really good time. We got good stuff up there. Um, and there was something else and whatever it was, I don't remember. So moving on. <laughs> Oh, that's what it is. If you want to know what's going on with the center, email info at creativelife.org. Um, that will get you on the constant contact. And then you'll know what's going on in the center when I don't know. And it will also have, uh, hot links. So the, and the hot links are hot when you, when they say click here now, they will either take you right to the information or they will take you to the person that can help you get the information. Um, one example is, is the, our YouTube channel. Oh, our soul lit, our soul sessions, which are really amazing, by the way, um, uh, are on there and it says click here now and it takes you right to our YouTube channel and right to that playlist. And then from there you can like and subscribe to the channel and be notified when we upload new, which we upload at least a, one new uh, thing every week. Uh, and then that third week we have two because we have that soul session. So, cause I always put Sunday services up so you can be notified by all of that. That's what subscription, that's what liking and subscribing the pages will do. It will notify you. Uh, okay. Yep. I think I'm in the place where I get to tell you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, an enchanted day, a wonder filled day, uh, keep yourself dry day, uh, stay out of the wind day, a take the precautions that you need day, an inner peace day. A heavenly day. I do enjoy a good storm. Uh, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased and well represented. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are, as Reverend Jesse likes to say, a godly. All right. Think sapling when I say that. That's where, I think that's where his inspiration came from. So we're all growing out of that amazing source. So know who you are. Okay. Uh, Reverend David should be on Facebook live around 5 PM with you. I will be back on Facebook live around 9 AM uh, with you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved and I will see you next time.